Okay, we have a quorum. Please rise for the pledge. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Okay, approval of the minutes of October 17th, 16th, 16th, we have a chance to review. Move to approve. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Abstain. Open public meeting. Uh, first item on the agenda is Proclamation Home Health Care Month, Susan Flicksky. Okay. <laughs> Please do. Good evening. Um, I'm Susan Flicksky, and I'm here with my coworker Chris, and we work with Intrepid Healthcare, and we do both home care and hospice for the. Um, residents in the community and we work very closely with Hendrix Regional Health so we are there to serve any patient needing any kind of skilled need that doesn't they don't want to be in the hospital they don't want to go to rehab so we provide those services to those patients at their house and then the, November is National Home Care and Hospice Month so we're just here to to um, promote that as well <laughs> All right, I'll go ahead and read the proclamation and then we can approve it um, if we do wish to do so. Proclamation, a proclamation by the town of uh, Danville Town Council to proclaim November 2017 as Home Health Care Month. Whereas home health care provides high quality and compassionate health care services to those in need, especially at times of community or personal health care crisis and Whereas home health care is the most preferred method of health care delivery among disabled, elderly, and chronically ill individuals eager to live independently in their own homes as long as they possibly care, as possibly can. And whereas home health care in the United States is a growing alternative to hospitalization or other institution-based forms of health care for acute and chronic illnesses, providing care to millions of Americans each year. And whereas thousands of everyday heroes, such as home health, home care nurses, therapists, aides, work tires, tirelessly to provide professional health and palliative care and support to millions of Americans in, in need of quality health services. And now therefore be it hereby proclaimed by the Danville Town Council that November 2017 be designated as Home Health Care Month in Danville, Indiana, and encourage the support and participation of all citizens in learning more about home care and hospice concepts of care for the elderly, disabled, and infirm. Proclaimed and signed this, dark, this day of November 6, 2017, by the Danville Town Council. Is there a motion to approve this proclamation? So moved. Second. Okay, we have a motion and a second to approve the proclamation. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Those same sign. Thank you. Thank you. picture with it.
Okay. Next on the agenda is Julie Petrie. Progress on the roundabout. <laughs> I saw that deep breath. Come on. Yet another new schedule in my hot little hands. Um, the date that they gave me for the opening is um, November 15th. That was the schedule I got this morning. The, what they lack is surface on the street. They lack, um, the walk paths have not been paved, and there, which means they, there are a few ramps that they haven't paved. Duke Energy still has to put in lights, and that's been a bit of a drag. They've, they've, there's some issues with the, with the lights. Um, the signs went in today, the street signs, the turn here, turn there, those type of signs, speed limit signs that went in today. Um, the, most of the dirt is moved and ready, but the seating, they're not going to do any seating or anything until the, the lights are in. But other than that, they're just so close to the end, they just can't seem to get over that last little hurdle. Has it rain slowed them down? A little. Some of it is scheduling. Some of it is it's the end of the year, and they're scheduling with other projects. And some that of it, some of it's so their own issue. And don't they can't say that the rain has slowed them down completely. Some of it's their own scheduling issues, but some of it is the rain. Yes. One but, business owner was ecstatic when he could get into his yard. I'm sorry. One business owner was ecstatic. He got into his yard last week. He <laughs> opened up something there. Gentleman with the car. Yeah, well, and he, he'll he be a lot happier. He should be able to get into his driveway now, but there's still people driving. Yeah, he's, he's they're still happy. going through their yard, and I don't know why, because his driveway is open, but they're still all driving through his yard, and I don't know. His own employees are driving through his yard, and his driveway's open. I don't know what they're <laughs> doing, but that's okay. By the end of next week, no one will be driving through his yard. Ugh. I get a new schedule every week, and you know, I guess there's no rain in the forecast for the next seven days. And I, at this point, I don't see anything holding them up except the lights. And I, we don't have any control over the lights. So, and unless we, unless the temperature takes too big of a dip, the only, the only other thing that would hold us up would be striping, because it has to be 50 degrees to stripe. Has to be You're forty. Not very confident in November fifteenth at all. Oh no, I think I think it could have. The only thing that I I think we can get it striped and paved because the surface has to be forty five and rising to pave, and you know that number that number can be hit pretty easily. But the lights, I just don't know anything about the lights. The emails that I've been copied on are vague, and and it's only because I don't know what they're doing behind the scenes, and I'm I'm not their mean I'm not there to dictate their means and methods, so that's not what I. I'm not privy to some of that information. I'm going to dig into that a little bit tomorrow to find out where their holdup is. But they don't have to have grass growing to open the roundabout. They just have to have light striping and pavement. They don't even have to have walk path paved to open it. All they have to have is the surface, the striping, and the lights. lights. have just not even arrived at the job site for you. Well, the light, well, they're not going to put the lights up until they, the, the pedestals are poured. The pedestals are there. But they have not run the electrical from post to post. So we're waiting on Duke, is what you're saying. Mm -hmm. They're sub anyway. Once they get there, is that a relatively fast process, or? I would assume so. It wouldn't take more than a day to trench it in, and the poles shouldn't take more than a day to set. They should be able to, you know, a couple of days on their part. Lights, striping, and paving. Right? In order to open it. Right. Now, there are some other incidental construction items, but not to, to open it, they don't need to have those done. Substantial completion is defined as the road paved, striped, and lights. Okay. That's what they need to open it. Hopefully Everything that's... else, yeah. But November 15th is their final completion date. So that's another milestone date that, they're, that they will miss because they will not be final. Final completion is their final paperwork, everything complete. So that's another date. They will still be in damages as of November 15th. They'll, be, they'll, hit it, they'll miss another milestone date. It's there. Any other questions for Julie? Okay. 
you. Thank you. Okay, next is roundabout beautification, and that's Helen Corbett. Thank you, Marcia. My name is Helen Corbett, and I'm here representing the Hendricks County Garden Club on a proposal to beautify the roundabout that you were just talking about. Our proposal is to essentially replicate the project that was done at 200 South and Dan Jones Road with a Blue Star Memorial marker and landscaping. There are uh, 45 Blue Star Memorials in Indiana. There's two of them in Hendricks County, one at the rest area just west of 267 on 70, and one at 200 South and Dan Jones. Both of them are Blue Star Memorial Highway markers. That was our original proposal as submitted to the council. Uh, there are other options to do markers on rocks, different things, but um, in conjunction with the American Legion, uh, we were thinking of a Blue Star Memorial Highway marker there. We know it's really early. That That's our proposal. We just uh, don't expect a decision tonight. Maybe I don't know how quickly these things work, but I wanted to get the information to you and then take any questions you might have. Does your garden club, can they run lighting, strike, <laughs> pave? No. We have no experience with that. Well, then you're fine shape with the rest of the, the rest of our subcontractors, right? Great idea, Helen. And this is going to be in the center of the roundabout, is that correct? That would be our proposal. And how high will the uh, sign be? It, it has a seven-foot pole. They're saying that at least four feet needs to be underground. So I would think the pole being three more feet, the sign itself is 24 inches, so it would be like five feet. And depending on the elevation at the time, I don't know how high it would be from the ground. Be part of the placement, maybe. And I, I gave additional pictures of 200 South because they have trees, and I never thought that we might have different siding issues. So that's why we bring it to you, so you can put it together with everything else you know. About. The only concern from staff. Is Height vision, vision clearance, ability to be the enter, venue safely. Be the only thing. It can just model that a little difficult, should it? I'd like to think so, yes. Maybe we can get some examples of other roundabouts that have been. Got, like Carmel's got only, what, three or four roundabouts? Every road? Three or four hundred or something. So. Yeah. And they were set there and those are for them. Oh, okay. I did nice. take a look at the roundabouts up and down Dan Jones and 10th Street and noticed that they, they have grass features. It, it appears that the ability to enter and exit, you can only see the two on either side of you. You cannot see the other side. And I don't know how we want to make ours, but uh, after that was mentioned to me, I started looking around. And you do see the two on either side as you enter a roundabout, but you really don't have sight of the whole roundabout. And I don't know what we were thinking that we needed, but. So do we. Since it's so early, do we take this under advisement? I mean, this is. We can. We can. Where staff, you going to? Staff can work with the proposal and take a look and work with Helen and her people. Great idea. Thank you very much for bringing it to us. You're welcome. I know where you can get a hoster. Too. Yeah. As, soon as, she's, as soon as she's gone, we'll just dig one up real quick. Uh, next is water tower painting. Good evening. A couple times talking about the tanks and everything. I've got Ken Elliott from Banning Engineering and, and Josh Seeley from Banning Engineering. Uh, in your packet, we uh, kind of put some uh, cost estimates. Uh, in the past, we had uh, hired Dixon Engineering as independent 
uh, uh, inspectors to inspect. They gave us their uh, their reports and everything. And then uh, Josh, myself, and uh, Kent, uh, we sat down and kind of uh, seen what we wanted and take add or delete. And then they came up with some newer newer estimates. Uh, primarily, the, uh, on your left, the million gallon standpipe, that is scheduled for next year, uh, 2018, to get done. And that's our first one that we're looking at to get done, uh, the 750, 2019, and the question mark for the 85,000. So uh, where, where we went that. The, uh, uh, these estimates here, uh, subtotal about 196,000, I believe that's below the uh, threshold for bid, I believe. 200,000 on that. So we're looking at that. And then um, we kind of got through, then ask questions as you do. That's why I got Kent and, and Josh here to start going over some things. But uh, if you notice, we got power wash and spot interior, uh, grout repair, uh, things that needed to be done on this tank. This tank was uh, built in 1960. And actually, there need to be some improvements on that tank for safety and everything like that, OSHA, and get the old cage ladder off and have a regular different type of ladder and all that because that ladder is kind of cumbersome when you're trying to climb up that even though you have a safety harness on <clears throat> and down at the bottom there we've got in that price to uh, a mixer to be separate currently now we have a mixer in that tank um, mixer has been in there nine years so we've had no issues with that but to replace that motor if it went out to upgrade it they basically want thirty thousand dollars that's the cost of a whole new unit so there's another units out that we're looking at uh, for the other tank, uh, grid B, whenever that fails. I can't see changing something when it's still working. So when it's giving us good service, and when it does, we'll, we'll repair that. And then um, naturally on the 750, 1,000 uh, gallon tank, uh, we're looking around the same, same amount of price. Uh, with the mixer, that tank currently does not have a mixer in it, but next month I'm gonna be coming to the council for a uh, capital expenditure request to go ahead and purchase that mixer. Uh, it's gonna be, uh, around that 10,000 total threshold to install and everything, but we're gonna install that this next year. But uh, talking with the uh, uh, representative that uh, sells those, uh, we can get a $700 reduction off the price of that if we purchase this year and get it off these inventory. So uh, I, we may, uh, that's what we're gonna to try to do and have it and then have it down our shop. And then we got it uh, for next spring when we install that, go ahead and have that done before this tank is even scheduled to be painting because tank circulation just helps keep the water from stratifying and, and temperature uh, differences. And then uh, next, uh, repaint option on 85. That's what we got Kent and Josh here to kind of go over the good, bad, and the ugly on that. So I'll turn it over to Kent. All right. Uh, good evening. Um, I, I kind of also wanted to kind of maybe go back and touch on uh, the million gallon, the 750. You know, we talk about it being tank painting, but it's more than that. We're actually doing... Um, a lot of other work to update it to current safety standards and just maintenance for those tanks being out in the weather for you know, the years that they've been in service. So really, you know, we're 75% of that construction cost is the coating of the interior and exterior, but the rest of that is getting everything updated to current standards. <clears throat> so we have that kind of outlined in our, in our spreadsheet. And I also wanted to kind of maybe just touch base or clarify we are under the $200,000 threshold for bidding, but we will obtain quotes from qualified contractors to do the work. Uh, the advantage of doing this is we know that they're qualified contractors to do the work. Um, so, and that also will save cost on doing any public bidding uh, specification, well, public bidding process with that. So are there local contractors that can do this? Local? Uh, local, I guess as close as Indianapolis. Um, in the state, we've got we've got some contractors yeah, that can I, do I that. I would expect the Anvil would have that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Somebody closer. But um, a lot of them are our national firm, or they, they go across the country to do that. Same with, uh, you know, we have a, we have a local um, tank manufacturer, Phoenix Fabricators, that's in Avon, but they go across the whole whole country. In fact, their biggest state they do business in is Texas. So, you know, we, we have knowledge, you know, that's local, but most of these firms do do work all across the country. So I just kind of want to uh, clarify that. Um, so uh, we did a lot of research on this, the uh, 85,000 gallon tank. Uh, we knew it was going to be kind of a high cost item. And with our research, we kind of validated that. And the problem is uh, it's where its location is and the age. 
We're going to have to contain it, which means we'll have to build a scaffolding around the tank when we go to paint this to, for any blasting, um, because there was evidence of, of a, a large amount of lead that is still on that tank, it being so old. That was common practice to use that in the, in the paint, obviously. And so we have to have the, the uh, lead abatement also uh, included here. Um, we, one of the things that we don't have here and was recommended on the reports from Dixon was doing all the safety upgrades and, <clears throat> excuse me, and maintenance on it, strictly from the fact that uh, structural engineers with that, that age of a, of a tank, they want to actually st stamp and seal something structurally that they're welding on on an old uh, riveted uh, structure such as this. So ha having someone actually go in there and do the work and, and sign and notarize that is, is we couldn't, couldn't put in, uh, you know, pinpoint anyone that would actually do something like that. Uh, another thing that we also looked at was, well, if we, if we didn't want to keep this tank in service and we wanted to take it out of service, could we just go ahead and do kind of a, a cleanup on it, if you will? Uh, get get any rough stuff that's off of it and just do an overcoat per se on it. Talk to also the uh, painting manufacturers as well as the contractors and they said we can't do anything to touch it because of the, the lead that, that, that they you got to go down to the blast and then you're back at, at, at doing the shrouding at that point. So no one's going to touch it with with it with the, with the, the lead that's on it with with doing okay can we do a you know a, a power they won't even do a power wash. You could go in and do a you know, someone can take a hand, a hand towel and wet and do it, do it, you know, do basically a wet, wet cloth wash on the whole thing. That, by that time, you're doing labor intensive and, you know, you're back up to increased cost. So the third option we did look at was, uh, you know, demolition of the tank. Initially, we were given, uh, we're looking at estimates of 50,000. Uh, went back and looked and took some more pictures, a lot more questions from the demo contractors that we reached out to. And we actually got a uh, qualified quote of uh, sixteen to twenty thousand dollars to tear it down, so that number is actually significantly less than the fifty that we have here. So the fifty is conservative. We're more in that twenty thousand dollar range to demo it. Um, they could do that um, in a day. Uh, they would remove that. That does not uh, include removing the foundation, which is old limestone that they that's in the ground. So that would remain there. That would be something else. But if we wanted to contemplate removing that if for whatever reason we would want to do that. But we don't have to paint that. No. That's correct. Um, I, I thought well, I could remove it for 20 grand. I think that well, was one of the said. considerations is um, I know we have some uh, uh, we have some fire station equipment that's up on the ra on, on top of it for radio uh, that goes that relays back. Uh, I'm sure we could you know get a cost for that it would be significantly less than than the Price tag of four hundred thousand dollars to rebuild the tank. So I know I pushed the barrel to, to tear it down. And, um, what would it take to do that with us here? We have to vote on that, or what would make you guys decide to tear it down or paint? Four hundred thousand dollars for the people mm -hmm. of Danville is a lot of money for a tower that has no water in it that's just sitting there. Yeah, and um, I don't see any tourist buses going there, so I don't. I think, the, I think the main thing, that, that tank's been there since 1892, and it's is a historical value of through American Water Works. But on the other hand, it's like penny wise and pound foolish. Uh, yeah, the, how much money do you want to put in a sinking ship? Does American Water Works want to give us money? To no, take, they will not do that. No, well, then, and I, I'm, I'm not arguing with you about that. You want to go and ask the, all these people out here? Yeah, yeah I think that's, uh, uh, you all are citizens of town of Danville. Naturally, the town council, you make that decision. Yeah. Uh, you know, you can, we, it doesn't have to be tore down today. Like like sure. you'd like to see. Uh, there's time. It's it's it hadn't deteriorated yet to where it's rusty. Uh, you know, it's been up since well, over 100 and some years. Uh, it did serve as the uh, town's main uh, control thing from 1892 to like 1980. So it's like that. But the uh, reason why we drained the tank at the time was for inspection purposes. And then hydraulically, it has no value. Uh, now because we've got two other tanks sure. and I understand progress and that that's fine and you know I, I'm not arguing not to tear it down I, yeah. I'm not foolish to well, well, put money together. yeah yeah but the main thing is it, it's council's decision but I think you know might get a pulse from the town just to kind of see you an idea but and put the facts out there because I know if we just go in there and just all of a sudden get a demolition ball and start knocking it down somebody's not gonna be happy 
and that's you get that. Well, tell them to bring their four hundred thousand dollars. Well, well that's that that's right, but we'll but you've got to kind of you guys be a little more diplomatic. Out of your yeah, yeah. <laughs> but uh, uh, I oh yeah, I could use that money somewhere else. Twenty grand is yeah. way better than. 40. Oh, absolutely. I, I I'm not going to argue about that. Yes. Well, you have to sell it to those guys for liability purposes. They own the tank. Once they own the tank, they're responsible for all that. They're, it falls underneath their blanket for cleanup or possible lead paint chipping off and all that. We, 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 we it's theirs. We own the lead, so if we, yeah. if we, can, if we just had hired them and didn't sell the tank mm -hmm, to them, mm -hmm. then we, even if it's in the landfill, we mm -hmm. still own that. Yeah, lead. I do that. Yeah. Absolutely. You're 100 percent correct. And then my thing is logistically, uh, like I said, we got power wires around there. If they have to shut the power off, who, how long it's going to affect? It's going to affect the fire department, even though they have a generator. Uh, we got to find out somewhere to uh, further radio antenna. Either once that tower's gone, maybe put another mast up with the tower, you know, for the radio, however you want, because that bedrock's not going anywhere. It's per, I don't know how deep it is. It's probably 15 feet deep, and it's the biggest around this room uh, to hold that tank. Uh, all those years, but uh, don't have to paint the rocks. So don't have not, to paint the rocks. No I'm sure the graffiti no, artists no will take care of that. Pocket. But uh, you could look at the rock all day. Yeah, right? yeah. But uh, so at, it's just one of those things. You know, we got ten holes in it and only got one plug. So it's yeah. So how do we make that decision, you guys? Yeah, yeah. However you want to do. My first thing before you do that, what I want to do is to go ahead and get permission from the council to go ahead and, and have Banning Engineering start to prepare uh, plans and specs so we can get it out for price coding in January so we can get that going uh, on that because anytime we get painters coming in, we can review their, their, uh, uh, you know, their quotes, whatever, so we can select who we recommend to do that so they can get that on their schedule for next spring that, because they have to go out and project like say they paint all over the country they start from a and go to z so they try to get their plan what they want to do in, in a timely manner so we can get that going and to clarify that's yeah, just yeah. on the million that's just on the million gallon tank because that's what we have projected for uh for 2018 for actual painting that is in service that we need to get i would like to add mm -hmm. uh, on the next tank of pr mm -hmm. priority the 750 um i have been in conversations with hendrix regional health and uh they're identity logo or whatever has changed and they are interested in in participating whenever the time comes to paint it I also suggested that if they want it to happen sooner than two years then uh, we can talk about you know, how that would be incentivized but that, that would uh, we'd look for them to participate in the exterior because that would be the part they would be interested in. any any I'm safety not interested maybe Walmart would be I think that no, no, no. But uh, that tank naturally. Or, uh, or, or IU West. Yeah, yeah, IU West. Right, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but that, that tank there, if, if the hospital was to uh, go in on part of that, as far as the uh, outside uh, part, like the uh, handrails and the safety things that need to be monitored, naturally that's on us. It'd just be the exterior, whatever they wanted to, to do. Anything, is, anything would help. Uh, who, who gets the 10 grand observation fee? Who's that going towards? That's um, well. Dixon did the inspe initial inspection work on yeah, that. Yeah. You could okay. hire another inspection firm to do it, but we recommend a third-party inspection, yeah. which would be a Dixon Engineering mm -hmm. or a Tank Industry Consultants okay. or someone like yeah. that. Yeah, I know Mr. Pato would mention sometime have a somebody outside the actual independent the do the checks and balances. Yeah, good yeah, idea. yeah, yeah. And they're they're a good company. They they do well work. So and we estimated a part-time inspection on this since it's yeah. not a a full Every day, blast once, yeah, on, yeah. on the exterior, where we're not in, uh, mm -hmm. doing a full blast on the interior. Mm -hmm. on that okay. spot so their job the is, is essentially to make sure that the company that we're going to hire <coughs> is doing what we want them to do. Correct. Yeah. They're adhering to our the specifications and the details mm -hmm. that we're requiring. So that's that's what I'm looking at. Jimmy, you're certified in just about everything. Can't you do that? No, I don't do paint. I just I just watch it go on. I, I we get the graffiti off. That's about it. So it's not. <laughs> Your nails always look good when I see you. What's that? Oh, I wear gloves. They always look good. Wear gloves. That's a hand cleaner <laughs> and a scrub brush. That's pretty much it. But that, yeah. So that's that's kind of where we're at. For, like say uh, the other part, you can make a motion at, but I'd like to be able to 
go ahead and get permission to go ahead and start phase one if we can. Funding is available? Yes, we do have funding. Yeah, it comes out of our uh, um, uh, fire hydrant fee. I budgeted uh, $350,000 for this next year, and uh, it comes out that would be out of the water. Hopefully it will be a lot cheaper than that for that. So, And there is, and if the council uh, wishes to uh, move on the 85000 uh, we we got funding for that too, so to take care of all that. So it's all included. That's all I have. Somebody want to make a motion to approve the phase one on the million gallon tank? So moved. We have a motion and a second to approve the uh, cleaning, painting, repair of the million dollar, um, million, I'm sorry, million gallon standpipe uh, at North Elementary. All those in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed, same sign. Thank you. As far as the standpipe, is that something you want to move on right away? Is uh, I'm, I'm open to, like say, it. I understand finances. And, you know, it's like kind of like if you got an old car and it's sitting there rusty, do you want to put a lot of money in it or do you want to spend a lot of money to get it to drive down back and forth down the street and get some looks and that's about it. And uh, so, you know, it's uh, uh, just part of uh, progress. Mark has cost. Yeah. Um, in speculation that this conversation could occur today, I did speak with the director of the Hendricks County Communications Center, and he advised me that um, the intent on top that actually does not belong to Danville Fire. It is a countywide fire antenna. So it is imperative, obviously, that uh, something is there to replace it. Um, when I explained the cost involved, uh, they indicated that they would be willing to uh, possibly look at putting a tower there to, as a replacement. Uh, they didn't indicate if they would incur the entire cost, but they did feel it was important enough that a tower go back in in its place because that the antenna does pretty much uh, <coughs> dictate everything on the north of the side of the county, uh, the west side of the county. It's uh, uh, it's pretty integral in, in what their system for paging is and, and uh, radios are involved. So, uh, like I said, I, I talked to the director, I guess it would have been a month ago when this first came up, just just so I'd have some knowledge in case this actually came up again. So I just wanted to make sure that you had that knowledge. Uh, like I said, he, he indicated that no matter what happens, they're going to have to do something. So uh, they could be a player in this as well. So. Wanted you to have that information. Saying any questions? Any other locations that, that could be placed on a million, <laughs> million gallon or going out to hospital or into is is that inside of our building is a, is the actual yeah. uh, transceiver for that, yeah. and so it's tied in. That's the cable that comes out of our building and then goes up the. Uh, uh, the water tower itself, so uh, it's going to have to be uh, someplace that's housed. Obviously, I know the one out on North Elementary is housed, but then it's going to have to be easily accessible because uh, they'll do reprogramming, and they—I mean—they do reprogramming. They'll call us on a weekend and say we need in your building, and because we're going to do some updates on your uh, base station. So, just like we don't have a real problem with the antenna, but a. Skinny pull up with all some Oh, I, it, it, I, I think they would, quite honestly, um, would probably prefer the ownership of it, to be quite frank. I mean, uh, right now, you know, the their antenna's on our tower, if you know what I'm saying. Yeah, sure. And this that way they, they've got control over uh, the access to the tower itself. Now, you know, we've got to contact Jimmy anytime, especially if there's a lightning strike. Oh, yeah. You know, uh, those antennas get struck all That's the time. True. And so we've got to call Jimmy and... Uh, rouse Tim up and say, hey, we're going to be on your tower and things like that. So I'm sure they would prefer the ownership solely. So. I, I would suggest that at least on this standpipe that we table that until you can do your investigation on the tower. And be, I don't want to make any rash decisions. And yeah, yeah. we need to be prepared to to have that taken into consideration as well. Minimize uh, yeah. Yeah. 
I personally think in traditional Any other questions for me? Thank you very much. Jeremy? Yes. Can, I, can we revisit something here for a yes. second? The 750,000 uh, gallon tank for, yes. for 2019. Mm -hmm. Did you say that if, if you had the money to go ahead with that now to get get in the queue, if you will? Uh, I, th I think if we combine them together, that's going to put us into the bid because you would, you would have this plans and specs will basically be the same so for the paint. Come, so do you want to come back? Yeah, I'd like to come back and, and, and not get both we just get one and just we got time because right. the other tank based on the uh, Dixon's uh, estimate we just had it power washed this last year and it looks pretty darn good sent out to the hospital got all the algae stuff off where it grew on the underneath side so uh, they recommend that uh, two-year period so I'd like to keep track with that because I don't want to spend all that money if we if we get rid of all that money all at once then we're starting back at zero again in that fund just check and uh, I would like to do one at a time. Do it like that. Thank you. All right. Thank you. Jimmy, real quick. Yes. The eighty-five thousand, the old one. Yeah. As it sits, as it stands right now, all this is based on getting it to function again. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. What is the? What is the current? Is there a current need that we have to do, even if? To keep it there as a if, if you kept it there it's just going to basically just fade and rust and eventually there's there's paint chips off of it now and rust is starting to run down it uh, algae well the reason why part of the algae was there because it had water aesthetic aesthetically it's going to look worse all the time i think the town of brazil or city of brazil they left the tank go because they didn't have the money to paint and it looked horrendous okay. then they ended up tearing it down so the, right. yeah so whether we fill it with yeah, it's that's a that's a lot of money to use. It's an eighty-five thousand capacity, and we use about twenty percent of that. So that's a lot of money for twenty, thirty thousand gallons each day. Uh, you know, it's uh, yeah, it's just I think uh, you know you hate to see stuff like that go. We always kind of pat ourselves on the back that we kept that in service, but at, there's a point in time that that I think uh, we have to do that. And frankly, I don't like climbing that tank. It's a, it's 100 feet tall and it's only 10 feet in diameter and that's not very much platform to stand on and I don't like falling and uh, I've done that once but uh, but yeah it's uh, uh, yeah and then we've got graffiti artists on it and stuff like that and trying to take care of it and plus two now with the uh, uh, playground there also I think that has a big big value there and how many rivets do we have on that thing? there's over 7,000 rivets in that I've counted them. So to get yeah, yeah. good coatings all the way yeah, around it, it's, it's, it's intense. It's pretty, it's very intensive because I remember when they painted the last time, that guy was up there just all day doing the rivets first and then, because you can only uh, hand paint and roll uh, the whole thing. You can't spray because of the houses or anything like that. You don't want to get any overspray. So, it, yeah, it's, it's, uh, it's a lot of money for no more than we've got. So that's, I that's, uh, appreciate the council listening and you guys can talk it over and, and uh, ultimately, it's the, your decision, and, and I think uh, money-wise, we need to invest in our other two tanks. Yeah. Oh, absolutely, yeah, yeah. It is a good view, great view, uh, but uh, it's a little small on top. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Storage-wise, we still meet our, our, our daily storage mm -hmm. that we need per item standards. And put it in perspective, we have 1.75 million gallons in the two other tanks. Mm -hmm. And we have 20,000 usable gallons yeah, yeah. in that tank. So um, it's a drop in bucket compared to the two, two mm -hmm. large mm -hmm. tanks. So hopefully this will help you guys this decision. We'll, uh, like I say, logistically, once you make that final decision, we'll, uh, we'll naturally need to work with uh, Chief Morgan and about uh, the mast and everything for their plans. And I think once, once that happens, we kind of coordinate that. Like I say, they can, if they were ever mast, if they put a mast there, that bedrock's not going anywhere. They can attach it right to that. Oh, it's got a good foundation. I, I would just ask that maybe you go forward and do the research on what it's going to take to, what our cost is going to be if we have to be um, participating in the cost of putting that. Yeah, I think uh, Chief 
with the with Center Township or the. Oh, okay, yeah, yeah, get that and see, like, uh, get everything taken care of. Okay, all right, thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. All right, next is uh, capital expenditures. Bob. Good evening. I have two requests, uh, one being uh, replacing a dump truck bed. Uh, for $14,589, it's on a 95 uh, international dump truck. I attached uh, some photos with that, and uh, we've definitely, uh, it's definitely seen its life cycle. The, uh, the cab and chassis is, is still in good shape, uh, sound motor in it, and um, we just need to replace that bed. Um, Clark Equipment out of uh, Crawfordsville for $14,589. What will you do with the old bed? Uh, they'll they'll take it. They'll take it. Yeah. You want to put it in the center of the roundabout or? Our bed. Okay. Here. You want to make a motion on the dump bed? Yes, it's coming out of MBH new equipment. There are sufficient funds available. Up this request in the eighty-nine dollars for a new dump truck body. Second. So we have a motion and a second to approve the expenditure of 14589 to replace the dump bed international dump truck. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. On the second request, I have not selected a vendor yet. I just want to move forward with the approval from the council for $45,000 for the, uh, the two-man lift. I have one more quote I'm waiting to receive, and I just want to do... Uh, not to exceed forty-five thousand dollars on on the the boom. This is um, part of the two-man lift that the uh, it's shared between the Public Works Department and the Parks Department, and um, we use it year-round, and uh, the Parks Department uses it seasonal. And I do have funding for that out of MVH new equipment. So if we buy a new one, what happens to the old one? We'll trade it in. Trade. And, and I will not buy a new one. I'll buy a, a demo style that's two or three years old, and I'll still be able to get a warranty on it. And uh, a, a new one's roughly about $80,000 for a two-man lift. And How old is this one? It's a 1997. And, and we're start, it's starting to nickel and dime us. And uh, I'm really concerned with, with the boom and, and the safety for the guys. And, that, and that's why I want to move forward with it. Get approval not to exceed forty-five thousand dollars, so I can move forward and get that replaced because the uh, parks department it's, it's coming up for their their use right now. Is there money's there? MVH new Can equipment consensus motion 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 we approve uh, not to exceed the expenditure forty-five thousand for a uh, for Rob to proceed looking for a two man see. We have a motion and a second to approve the expenditure request for $45,000 for a two-man lift. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Thank you. Okay, next on the agenda is sewer service agreement. Jerry Crisp. This is the agreement between the town and the landfill to provide sewer service for treating the leachate from the landfill. The language has been tuned up to further protect the town and to allow us to collect additional fees from the landfill. Basically, it's a repeat of five years ago other than that. Available if you have any questions. I have a question, Jerry. Do they, does Marcia need to sign this tonight or do we wait for the copy to come back from waste management to sign or is this is Jerry's signature? Marcia signed it first. 
Yeah, but it doesn't matter. Okay. So, need a motion to approve the agreement? Second. Motion and a second to approve the sewer service agreement between Town of Danville and Waste Management. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Okay, um, next on the agenda is Ordinance 12, 2017, Eads Annexation. I understand this has already been through public hearing, all the processes, and all we have to do is enact the ordinance. This is ready for adoption tonight. Any questions? I would entertain a motion to approve the ordinance. Madam President, I'll make a motion that we approve and adopt ordinance number 12, 2017, an ordinance annexing territory to the town of Danville, specifically uh, Eads property. Fair second. Second. Okay, we have a motion and a second to uh, approve and adopt ordinance 24, 2017. All those in favor signify by saying, I'm sorry, 12. Well, uh, Ordinance 12, 2017. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Oh, same sign. Apologize. Now we're on Ordinance 24, which is the zoning uh, ordinance for the same. Madam President, I'll also make a motion to approve and adopt Ordinance Number 24, 2017, an ordinance for the town of Danville zoning certain territory, 50 Morrill Lane. Or one zoning. There here a second. Second. Okay, we have a motion and a second to approve and adopt ordinance 24 2017 uh, zoning for um, the same property we've been discussing on ordinance 2020. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. All right. Next is ordinance 20. 2017 ordinance to public establish a park and recreation this ordinance was brought before you at the last council meeting it's just up for signatures and approval tonight it's to establish our new park fund that will be in place in January we have a motion to approve so moved Mayor second second we have a motion and a second to approve ordinance 20 2017 ordinance to establish a parks and recreation fund all those in favor signify by saying aye aye, aye. aye. those same sign ordinance is approved ordinance 23 2017 appropriating proceeds for general obligation this as well was brought before you at the last council meeting and it's just for approval this evening. And it's for the GL bonds that Gary and I are working on. With the police vehicles and the park truck. I'll entertain a motion to approve. I'll move. Okay. Okay, we have a motion and a second to approve and adopt ordinance 23 2017. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Those same sign. All right. Uh, resolution 15, 2017. This is a resolution for the library. They are still working on their tax levy for the debt services that wasn't established this year by mistake. This is just a resolution that the town council has to pass for them to be able to obtain a temporary loan from their debt services to be able to pay back their bond payment. Any questions for Jenny on this? We'd entertain a motion to approve. Madam President, I'll make a motion that we approve and adopt the Resolution 15, 2017, a temporary loan resolution. We hear a second. Second. We have a motion 
And a second to approve resolution 15 2017 temporary loan resolution. Um, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Okay. Insurance agent of record. I'm seeking clarification from the council whether or not we're looking for the middles. Agents of record to work on behalf of Frank Bell, or if you're looking for associated cost policies for property, casualty, workers' comp, that type proposal brought back to you. Because it's been, I've heard both ways, and so I, I just need clarification. I've got a format for insurance agent of record. One of the other way. Get that information from our current agent. Calls the loss run statements. Call the format and send those out. Comments? Your question is, you're, you're asking the question, do we want to stick with, stay with the, excuse me, the agent of record. of record versus searching out? Yeah, yes. I've got a format that I include. The, the submittal date's wrong. I want to make, I just want to make sure back. I understood the question. Yep. Uh, yeah. That or, or the other? I'm... Personally, I'm 100% comfortable with the situation that we're presenting. <coughs> Speaking to the people that are involved in it on a regular basis, I think you would, my knowledge, know people that are currently involved that towns first for sure. Actually, I don't think it's broken off. Anymore. People involved in it, it's good to this point. <coughs> I'm hundred percent. I have no problem working with Rich, but my, my question and I had a problem working with their agency, correct? My only concern is is this something that we need to address from time? I'm, I'm a little confused. We have agent of record, and is our insurance agent? Is that correct? Yes, and they go out, and then they, and solicit, they, they solicit. They solicit the bids. Your broker, policy, the quotes, the broker. Apparently, basically broker. So, okay, Rich, can I ask you a question? How often do you go out and shop this? kind of time frame does it take to do something? No. I have no problem. Thank you for doing that. I have, I have no problem shopping around for a new agent, but it behooves us to there are other agents that do same and I don't 
know what the cost was. Agent working with a company prepared an agent policy typically somewhere Right, right. So how long have we uh, been using your services, sir? 25 uh, years? Pardon? 25 years? Yeah, at least. <laughs> So would you like some healthy competition? So what you're saying is that all the insurance comes from a couple of people and all the brokers can get, are going to give us quotes from those same people. But the brokers are gonna add a percentage so they need to make money. So I guess what we're talking about here is the amount of percentage that the broker is going to charge. Is that what we're talking about? If we went out no, to tender? We're not talking about, we're not talking about that? It What do you guys think? Need to go out to tender. Doesn't sound like this. It, yeah, my opinion is not. My opinion. Just like just like he explained, when when you have a, a pool of insurance companies, and you have a they are bidding to an agent, so they are they are competing. They are being competitive. They are they are going. They are coming in with lower cost. My understanding. Where if you have the multiple agents agents doing it. Beginning is, is that actual cost from the company is as aggressive from the hindsight, like they've pointed out, the typical agent fee is traditionally basically the same, regardless. Starting with a lower number, which you would be with an agent aggressive. And on top of the other reasons I had talked about, just personally. People I've talked to that are involved in it, it's, it sounds like what we've been doing is working for us. Thank you. I have no problem asking other agents to fill this. Having said that, I'm a huge fan of service value on that. I still would like to 
see what's out there. I think we need to do our due diligence as a town. That doesn't, that, don't take that as, oh, we just, I just think we need to look around. Agent, who's do we think that they could provide better service? Let's find out. Bar set pretty high. I would tend to agree with you, Mike. The, the the rate the rate that the town pays is public knowledge, correct? I feel like they have a makes it makes it makes it a little lopsided when you have somebody else coming in to type it. You makes it a little meet that price. Sure, I can meet that. What it is? That's what a bid is. Well, then that's what a bid is. He can also bid. Figure out. It gives us a chance to get a better price. The other people are going to bid. Do they have a storefront? Well, that's what we would. When we get the bid, we'll take a look. Why don't we go back to what we talked right. about a couple minutes ago? Maybe Rich or Carson could explain it again. The difference is when you have multiple agents bidding it. Well, we wouldn't necessarily have. Which. They're, they're not giving you any quotes on policy. No, I'm, I'm looking at, at they're giving you information service. about themselves and their agency. So this is for an agent so you, of record. And if, and if you're, if you're, so you're, you're saying fill that you're, out you're, and let's vote on that. Fill that out and maybe we need, to, <laughs> we need to take a look. Your focus is on service, is on who's going to give us the service. I think, well, price is going to be an issue, but if we know what we have with John. But what, what, more. What, is the, what is the harm of saying, is there another agent out there that could provide the same service, similar service, as yeah, it, and it, who would provide? Just in my opinion, it is, just in my opinion, it is something when you open it up to multiple people, there's already a number out there, mm -hmm. who's going to come in and hire them? Oh, yeah. But again, <coughs> it's more than just a dollar amount. You know, and, and like, like, yeah, like Dennis, been Dennis said, there's, with a, there's a value in having a storefront in Danville. That's what I agree with that. Value for longevity. And I agree with that, too. I also think that putting a door, or how do, how do we know there, there is somebody better out there? Not that there is, but. I think sometimes, I think sometimes when, if somebody is in a, in a situation like this where it's, we are very, very aware of every dollar we spend. If somebody comes in and says, go for, for less than don't go with them. This, I mean, that, that is what the focus on is. The number is already out there. Everybody's going to come in with it. So, <coughs> what is, well, now we've done it, now we have to go with the lower number. We've passed on that. Higher bid because they were the more responsive. Exactly. Well, you got more value for money. This form. This is proposal for themselves Look at the scope of services. Will crawl quotes on behalf of the agent will coordinate claims. Okay, then you go in there and they will tell you how they're going to do that. So maybe the other, what kind of money are we talking about here? See, that's that's what I was trying to ask. You want a proposal on insurance agent of record. Proposals, cost of each and every policy that we have. You want that? Then I've got different numbers. I personally prefer the agent of record. Yeah, man. Yeah. 
that's what was discussed in the work study the other night. Not that we go out and take quotes for insurance. It's the agent of record. My question would be, if you would any agent of record have access to the same companies as any other agent of record? So is it fair to me ask you, how do you make your money? Do we pay you a fee? You get a... Well, I mean, you pay the premium, and I have to get... Okay, okay, that's, that's understandable. That's fine. As would any other agent. Okay, that's different than what I thought. Uh, I think in fairness, I mean... We've given Rich an opportunity to say a few words, and I know Kevin is, is here, and he is one of them. That would, He has been the one that has kind of forced the issue of it's the due diligence, it's the responsibility of the town that we review these things. I, I'm going to be honest. I've told, I've told Kevin our relationship with Rich has been longstanding. We have had no issues with them. They are local. The revenues that that come from that go directly into a Danville company. That's very important to me. Um, but I want, out of fairness, I want to give you a chance to to speak to that. Um, Rich is right. He can get quotes from lots of companies. Um, I don't think he can get quotes from all the companies that I can. Um, I, I just don't. I mean, a lot of them are brokers. Some of them are direct markets. The direct markets, you have to have a contract with the agency. Um, and I don't think he's got all those contracts. So when we get into this, is it an agent of record or is it a bid? If he goes to four markets and I go to four markets, I don't understand how that's going to inflate pricing. You think that all the quotes go into one agent is going to be better than two people competing? I don't quite understand. I mean, I've I've sat through this whole meeting. Rob didn't go to one dump truck company. He went to two dump truck companies. So I don't see how competition is different. Rich is exactly right. If he and I both go to EMC, we should both get the same price. That doesn't mean that if I go to Astra and he goes to EMC, that'll be the same price. They could be drastically different. Now, I'm not going to say it. Rich may have this wired down tight as a drum. I absolutely have no, there, I, I can't say because, Jimmy, you said it's public record. I've yet to go get those documents. I have yet to go get those documents. Deference to the process. It may be wired down tight as a drum. Okay? All the coverage may be exactly what I would suggest. All the values may be exactly what I suggest. But I do this every day for public entities and for private individuals. Okay? And like you said, Mike, I get a foot in the door. I'm not 04. Right? Not every agent has every single thing wired down all the time. Again, Rich may have this one down. But as a council of 9,000 people spending how much money? I think you owe it to those people to make sure you're spending it right. And the last thing I'll say about local, let's say it's $200,000 premium. Okay, and I think on PNC it's more like 15%, not 
percent. Now we're talking thirty grand. It's thirty grand that's staying local. It's not two hundred. Two hundred's going to an insurance company. Thirty grand staying local. In my agency, the producer keeps forty percent of that. I'm local. All right, so now you're down to eighteen thousand dollars is the difference. I get he's a taxpayer, he's got a business here, they pay taxes. I'm not going to, you know, you guys can make that decision. You can make the decision tonight to stay with Rich. And I'm not going to walk away mad as an insurance agent. It happens to me all the time. People make decisions that I don't agree with. That's fine. But I don't think you're looking at this the right way. You keep talking. I, I just, Jimmy, I get what you're saying. It's public record. People are going to come in probably with a low number. Okay? I, I did some research. We insure eight towns within the collar counties that touch Danville, touch Hendricks County. In four years, I've seen a 1% or 2% increase on those towns. So on the premium, right? So we, so we went in, our number was better than someone else's at some point in time. It's not now skyrocketing. It's not taking off. Our agency does municipalities. I mean, Gary knows Mike McCormick and Tim McCormick. They've served on the IPEP board. They know coverage. They know those things. We're good at what we do. So if you want to put it out for an agent RFP bid, I'll answer that. If you want to leave it with Rich, you can do that. My suggestion, if I were a, cons a paid consultant by you, I would ask you to get two or three agents, ask them to rank their companies as to who they think will be best to do this, and assign them and give them a shot. Because it's not going to be down to one company. There, are, you know, I counted up eight companies I have access to. So there's eight companies. That could be four and four. That could be two, 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 and two if you find two other guys who are involved. And then the last thing I'll say, it's not easy. Like Rich said, we're going to have to go get loss runs. All the guys who haven't been doing this are going to have to come talk to Rob and to Barry and to Ray and talk about age of roofs and updates and values, and there's going to be questionnaires. It won't be an easy process. So if literally you've looked at the dollars that you're spending and you've said those, are, and you do believe those are fair dollars and you believe the coverages you're getting are fair, then leave it with Rich. Let him, let him bid his four companies. But I just don't think that competition hurts. Any other comments? I like the competition. It doesn't make a lot of sense. If one of them, if one of these new people come in lower, we're going to stick with Rich because of the service we've had for 25 plus years. It makes no sense in having somebody go waste the time doing it. And I don't disagree with you, Dennis. Um, I think one of the concerns I've had over the years is that, and I know that from a health insurance perspective, we've seen this. Um, we go out and we change for the benefit of competition. And when we go back to renew again, then they raise it back up to market price again and, and we're kind of in the same boat as we were before. Um, I have no doubt that both of you would be a, a great agent to represent the town of Danville. I have no doubt about that. Um, but I do believe that, and I think it's closer to 50 years, the, the relationship that we have with Rich, um, I believe that over the years, um, and I, I've talked to both of you one-on-one, -on -one. Um, I do believe he has access to more than four companies. And I would ask him if we'd make the decision to stay with him, that he go and review all of those companies, not just the, the 
top four that he thinks is most important. But my fear of, of changing isn't that I'm voting to change to another company. It's that it changes the the practice that we've always done and the trust that we have Exactly, and again, that is no reflection on you, Kevin, whatsoever. But I agree that I think that there's an awful lot of sentiment here that we feel like he's done a good job for us, and we want to, and as I told you, Kevin, when we talked, if you had a customer that you'd had for 25 or 30 years, you'd want to remain, you'd want to be able to stand on that long-term relationship and trust. And so I think that's, if, if I'm the swing vote, I think that's where I'm going to fall and say I appreciate the interest that you both have in it. But if, if we take, and, and probably the best thing is to take a vote, not just an opinion. But. So with that, if, if there's any more discussion, if not, I would entertain a motion. You make a motion and we'll whatever you want it to be. Make that motion. Okay, we have a motion and a second to retain the current agent of record and not do a further search. Does that state what you're saying, Jim? Okay. Uh, all those in favor of that motion signify by saying aye. 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 All those opposed? Opposed. All right. Motion is carried, and we will retain services of Jensen, Stevenson Jensen. Kevin, we appreciate your interest. All right. Gary. Laura? Well, we've heard from almost every department head. Is there any other department head that would like to speak? Okay. Any? Oh, wait a minute. I didn't ask for input from the public. Any comments from the public? Uh, congratulations, Danville football winning sectional big game this Friday night. Uh, Chittard at home, 7 o'clock, and it'll be live streamed uh, by Endeavor again. So if it's you don't like 30-degree weather for football, uh, at least you can watch it at home. It'll be great to have you out there, though. Nothing for me. Claim docket. Move to approve. Second. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Claim dockets approved. Meetings adjourned.